when you do a fishbone analysis, you've got these first categories sticking out of the fishbone. What are they actually? And I mean, you've seen them, right? Here we have some categories, four, six, sometimes even eight. What to put there? Because it's not just standard words. There is a reason why they are there. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel. We talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And today's video is about the categories you put on a fishbone analysis. Now, if you are in industry like I am, you may actually already know the four M's, uh, which will be definitely coming back in this one because they are the standard category. But before we go into you know, what is in manufacturing, the, the, the four or even eight M's, uh, we've got service industry, we've got strategy, marketing, management. They have their own sort of set of so many letters, so to say, but this is not uh, picked at random. These are meant to get a full scope of your problem or of the sphere that you are exploring. Now, first, let's take one step back and sort of look at this idea of the fishbone analysis. I've done some videos on that before. Go check them out uh, if, if you like it. And it's about the reason why you do a fishbone. And that is to broaden the scope. And a fishbone is, in fact, a very good tool and a support on paper or digital, of course, for your brainstorm. So it is a guided brainstorm technique that categorizes what you are talking about and it tries to get a, a full picture. That, that's why you do a fishbone type of analysis uh, instead of a word cloud or uh, just make some listing or a mind map. So that is, you, you need to uh, sort of steer your brainstorm into different um, directions when you want to do a good problem solving or when you want to uh, fully explore what is around launching a service or maybe why your marketing campaign uh, didn't work or how you're going to set up your market campaign so that it will work. And that is why in a fishbone analysis, um, you try to as a problem owner and facilitator together, or as a, at, at least as a small preparation on doing the actual analysis with your team, you already make the first choice. You decide which categories were put there. Now, the standard fishbone picture, and uh, here also I drew it with four boxes, basically. You can extend it, you can add a fifth, a sixth, in some cases, uh, eight boxes. Although, to be honest, I think the fishbone becomes uh, a, a little bit messy to see after four or five of these categories. But basically, that, that is a bit of another topic. If you make it big enough, it will still work. So just you know, use more paper. These categories that you will often see, uh, they are a bit split in industry. Now, um, the one that I use in my problem solving template, uh, I'll put the download link below, by the way, but that is really focused on uh, when you have a problem in an industrial setting. So it, it assumes that you are making stuff with machines and that there is a problem. And in these cases, you use what is known as the four M's. Sometimes a couple M's are added. I'll get to that as well. Uh, but let's explore them first, and it will give you uh, a good idea and allow me to you know, discuss how this helps to broaden the scope and make sure you don't forget anything. So you've got your machine, material, method, and man. These are the standard four M's for industrial processes. And what this does is it says, when you are producing something, these are the four main factors that, that really come into play. So you have a machine that needs to work, that needs to be in a good state, uh, but that also may have malfunctioned or jammed. So these are typical machine things. Then you have your material components. So that means your raw material mainly, or your fillers or ingredients, and if, or, or your packaging material. If anything is out of specs or out of what your process can handle on the material side, it gets into that. The method, these are most of your settings or the, the ways you do things. So these are your standard operating procedures. And then man uh, is the human factor. So this is, um, in principle, we have our methods, but uh, did we follow them? Uh, do we have the understanding? So uh, the people 
performing our processes, to what extent do they influence it? Can they make mistakes or uh, are they a source of variability? And by checking all of them, you make sure that um, when you are in a, a problem brainstorm and uh, your machine has broken down, that you do not focus all of your attention only on this machine problem. Because this is actually quite common, especially if you have a group of engineers uh, and maybe also more technically inclined operators. Uh, I often see that they like to you know, get down into the, the nitty gritty of the machine. Where did it go wrong? Which uh, cog broke? Uh, what part of the, the setting of the pistons didn't work? That can be very valuable, but in the total picture of a problem in your processes, in your operation, very often machine isn't the only thing. So you have to check before we blame the machine, did we actually also have the correct um, raw material in there? Are the material specs, are they a, a fit with our process? And the first thing, of course, especially if you are problem solving is, well, were they up to the defined standards? But if you are more in a design phase for a new process, you will check what can my process handle material-wise? So is there anything that we have to limit? Do we have to tell our supplier, well, this base material can only be between these sizes, because if it is bigger, we cannot get it into our machine openings. Or if it is bigger somewhere down the line, it starts to jam. This forces you to check all of these factors with a method and man also really going into and then how well did we define our methods? Are they easy to follow? Do we follow standard work procedures? Uh, did we in fact train our people on all of the critical steps? Not an uncommon mistake indeed is to train our people on the, on the com uh, common way of working. So let's say on the sunshine days. But it's more difficult to train on a breakdown, on a non-standard situation. And there's just you know, a couple of our operators with good experience uh, who maybe were there when the line was also brought into the factory and built up. And they have the specialist knowledge, but the rest we sort of forgot to teach them because it's too difficult. Stuff like that comes up a lot in both the problem uh, solving way of using a fishbone, but also in the the new process launching, the, the new projects where you really want to check all of these aspects. And here you see it tries to divide it, right? So sometimes I see people uh, use a fishbone and one of the first things they do is let's get uh, the four or five things that have the biggest impact on our problem. And this can definitely work, but it has the, the problem, the pitfall of this blind spot. So uh, people could, for instance, say, well, we first go for the gearing and then the hydraulic pressure, uh, the electronic system and the uh, operators. But that means that you take a really strong assumption into your brainstorm before you give yourself the chance to make sure you've covered all your bases. Now, of course, also when you have these four, it can still be that uh, your team comes up with a lot of machine things and almost no method things but at least this way you think about it. And also, if you are in a problem solving or product, if you are in any fishbone uh, analysis and you see as a facilitator that your team is really populating one of the categories very vigorously, but not really touching the others, it's a good thing to you know, punch in a little bit, ask more specific questions about these categories. Do we really not have problems on those ends? Do we really not have to cover any bases that might be uh, a bit shaky at the moment? And that's why I suggest, uh, especially in, in problem uh, analysis, but, but also when you are launching new things, uh, use one of these broad uh, systems of categories. Now let's, let's add a couple more, uh, because in fact, uh, the 4M can also become a 5 or a 6M. I'll add them now. So number five is measure or measurement system. And number six that is added, um, it's sometimes called milieu, it's sometimes called environment, uh, but uh, a nicer term for it is mother nature. So these two, uh, these are not the machine measuring itself. These are uh, the measurements that we perform in and around our process. 
So maybe we have problems or critical areas and where we need to look in how we actually you know, measure the performance or measure the product specifications. How do we check if things are okay? Can we, can we sense, can we measure, can we check things around our process? And maybe there are also you know, non-calibrations or deviations in the measurement system that either cause our problem or even uh, the measurement is falsely telling us that there is a problem. Uh, so, so both of these are quite common. And for that reason, by the way, I do like measure to be added as, a, as an extra category, although I also think that um, it is well within method and machine uh, to cover this. So it, it depends a little bit on, on how you put it in your discussion. I like to keep the categories uh, fewer. So that, that's my reason not to uh, include measure uh, always in my, uh, my analyses, but that one I do really like. And well, as you can probably already feel, I don't like Mother Nature that much as a category. And that is because it is out of your control and it doesn't lead to any root cause or solution. And basically it, it detracts from the other categories. So in my experience, they don't really yield too much wonderful stuff to, to work with later in the, in the process. It can be nice, uh, especially if you know that uh, the, your team members, they, they do also you know, sort of want to blame something outside of their zone of control. Sometimes it is good to at least talk about it. Yes, it was the, uh, it was the high humidity uh, that really is a problem. Um, but then really, when you are facilitating such a discussion, try and bend it around to the other ones again. So if it is a high humidity, which methods and which machine parameters, um, what did we have to do? Or was it a, ma a material problem? So what can we do to be stable enough that Mother Nature can play with us from time to time? And there is another one that is quite close to it because this is really meant for you know, machined stuff, uh, production of a product by a machine. And uh, of course, we also have a, a huge service industry and within service, well, the, these two don't really um, add much value. I mean, uh, there might be services in, in your, there might be machines in your service industry, but it, it is different. So for the service industry, there is another system and, and this is usually called the 4S. So let's get them down on the board as well. So the four S's of the service industry that are surrounding suppliers, systems and skills. And you see here also a bit of overlap, right? It's also in your business side. So skills is, is really linked to man. Systems is a bit machine and method together. Um, and, but let's start at the top of surroundings. What this means is what does the market want? Uh, what are competitors doing? How is the service landscape moving? And, and what is the market doing? So what is happening around our service proposal? Then we have suppliers, and this is uh, assuming you have suppliers at all, but this is about what is our supply market doing? So what type of organizations are supplying our service products to us? Uh, how do they work? What do we need to do with them, for them? Uh, and how can we well, make sure on the supply side that things are moving uh, wonderful, but this is then aimed outwards. So you do, of course, do all of these things inside your company, right? Uh, you have to manage your suppliers, but this is directed towards suppliers and system is more directed inwards. So that is more, how did we as a company build up our systems? Uh, do we make sure that everything runs smoothly? Uh, do we make sure that we don't drop the ball when it comes to customers, uh, our employees, no, all of our own systems? And these might indeed be machines uh, if we are sort of a half product service uh, thingy or uh, when we have machines giving us uh, all kinds of nice things like you know, data centers are of course full of machines as well. Uh, the skills, and this really goes into our personnel, do we have within our team perhaps extended by our suppliers, but in our team that serves the customer, do we have the skills needed to keep them satisfied, to have our business processes going well? And here you basically see the same happening. And that is how you can also, if, if you ever want to you know, think of your own categories for a fishbone, 
um, perhaps it is useful at, at, at some point, but think about these systems uh, that really try to look around where are, in, in which directions do we need to look for the problem. And they try to have a holistic view of what can go wrong because a fishbone is really meant to broaden the scope. After you have the fishbone, you check all of those assumptions, or you, you write your assumptions here, right? Uh, all the things that come up, uh, possible machine cause, one possible machine cause, possible man cause. And then uh, after you've brainstormed that everything can be put onto paper, there is the first process, which is, is it actually correct? Uh, so yeah, we, we put it on paper uh, that um, one of our bigger competitors is moving into the um, iPad cover market uh, with, uh, with a color system. Are they actually? I mean, somebody thought it up, but do we see any proof of that? Or um, we say that our incoming material is very often not up to specs, so 10% of parties are not up to specs. Let's do this check. Um, maybe this was only an incident last week. Check it if it is true or not. Um, and then you go for which of those identified causes do we really think is, is, a, is a big one, is important enough to put the rest of our analysis in. Um, what you will also see, I will not write them out, but um, it, this is a big one because it is uh, in marketing and in, uh, in management and strategy. You see that one a lot and it's the eight Ps. So marketing also uses four of them, product, place, price, promotion. Uh, but when you go into uh, the, the total marketing management mix, uh, you get your, your planet and your people involved and the, you've got the, the eight Ps. Um, and this is a, a very good one. Again, if you see that it's maybe more your, your whole company. So it's not about a process within your company. It is about a marketing campaign or a product uh, proposition and placement that is not really moving. So you're losing ground on the market or you want to launch a new product stream. So a new product, check this, but get a new product into the market and ma make that market. Go and look up the eight Ps. But the idea again is the same pre-populate your fishbone with a number of categories that do not focus your discussion, but broaden it. Don't go for your own assumptions when you fill in the categories. Go for a system that will cover all the important bases and let your team do the discovering of what is or is not important and where might be your weak points at this moment for any product or process or service that you are investigating. Now, I hope that you like this explanation, how, what type of categories we use, how and why, a little bit on what they are, a bit more here, uh, but also uh, over there. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. And uh, please do drop me a comment if you would like me to explain any of these other terms that you see. I mean, we use so many 5D, 8D, uh, free, A3 type of letter with a number combinations within uh, Lean Six Sigma Continuous Improvement. Uh, if you have any other that uh, you would like me to explain, drop that comment. And for now, I wish you the best of luck in your fishbone analyses. And as always, don't forget to enjoy your improvement journey.